coming to you this week from Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates. CBN News joined a delegation led by Joel Rosenberg to check on the status of the Abraham Accords after they were signed on the White House lawn in September of 2020. The delegation met with many of the players involved in both developing the Accords and implementing them. Joel Rosenberg has led delegations of evangelical leaders to many of the Sunni Arab nations in the region. He explains what made this one so unique. I was invited by the governments of Bahrain, United Arab Emirates and Israel uh, to bring a group of evangelical leaders uh, to each country post Abraham Accords. The six other evangelical delegations I led were to explore whether peace was possible and, and what was the relationship between uh, Israel and the Jewish people and Christians with the Arab Muslim world. But the world has changed, not only COVID, but the Abraham Accords have been the game changer in the region. And I actually was moved and, and surprised that these countries each said, let's do something to celebrate and explore now that we have this historic normalization agreement, uh, how is it working? And where do we go from here? And how can even juggles be part of it? So uh, that I think is what's made this seventh delegation unique from the others. The second country to join the Abraham Accords was Bahrain, a tiny island nation here on the Gulf. For Bahrainis, they said that joining the Abraham Accords wasn't normalization, but formalization. One of the things that was interesting when I wrote the book Enemies and Allies is I met with a very senior Bahraini official and I said, you know, why have you decided to normalize relations between Bahrain and Israel and why now? And they said, no, 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 no. We don't call it normalization. We call it formalization. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, we, we've wanted peace and behind the scenes we've had peaceful cooperation with intelligence and security officials in Israel. We just haven't been able to be public about it because it was uh, not a kosher or maybe here you'd say halal. Uh, but this gives us an opportunity through the Abraham Accord to say we want a strong alliance, not just peace and normalization. We want an alliance with the nation of Israel and with the United States. And I've been pretty impressed by that. The first leader the delegation met was Israel's ambassador to Bahrain. CBN News sat down with Eitan Na'e from Bahrain's capital, Manama, for an interview to discuss the progress of the Abraham Accords. The ambassador says the Middle East is undergoing historic changes. So I saw two Israeli embassies open in the Gulf, one in the UAE, one in Bahrain, a consulate general that was opened uh, in Dubai, dozens of, uh, of agreements uh, that were signed. From the birth of the Abraham Accords on the White House lawn, Ambassador Na'e has been a key player in the agreements. There are significant, in fact, historical change to the course of events in the Middle East. They are an effort uh, to take a road that has not been taken before, establish a relationship between Israel and Arab countries, and not just that, it's proving to the rest of the Arab countries, to the rest of the world, and to the rest of the people in this region, that it is possible. But about 100 miles from Manama, the capital here in Bahrain, and across the Gulf, lies Iran and its regime that represents an existential threat, not only to Israel, but to this tiny Gulf country. Ambassador Naye says the Gulf countries see the Iranian nuclear deal just like Israel does. We hear from them exactly what we say. I think that the threat and the threat perception, the threat levels are pretty identical uh, by those who live in this region, by those who experience the kind of behavior that Iran got uh, infamous for. And the threat, the concern is, is real. Uh, we all know that the mother of all problems in the Middle East is, is Iran. Uh, well, all we have to do is to watch the news. During our time in Manama, violence continued to rock Jerusalem's Temple Mount. Ambassador Naye explains the rioting is nothing new. In the 30s, in the, amid the wave of uh, Jewish immigration to, uh, to then mandatory Palestine, running away from Hitler uh, just prior to the Second World War, and what the Palestinian uh, leader then uh, Haj Amin al-Husseini saw as Arab indifference. He came up with the idea of uh, how to attract attention and Al-Aqsa was the answer. Uh, the Jews are threatening Al-Aqsa. He disseminated this uh, fake news, they didn't call it then fake news, but lie, and uh, it caught fire. And uh, it is still uh, catching fire. He says the rocks being thrown are not just at Israeli police and Jewish worshippers at the Western Wall. But they're really thrown at the Abraham Accords. I asked our viewers, uh, your viewers, to really 
zoom out from just this event and say, look, they're doing it for the second year since uh, the Abraham Accords were signed in order to derail the Abraham Accords. Ambassador Naye points to the media's impact in the region. The peace process cannot advance without the public opinion. And the public opinion here in the region is being influenced by other media outlets that disseminate lies, fake news. And the role of the media is to really show the truth uncut to show the truth, to give the full picture, and to explain to people uh, what we're trying to do here. And that is an immensely important. Naye also says they welcome prayers from Christians around the world. Uh, yes, we need those prayers, we need this help, uh, we need those people who can to come and visit, to see in their own eyes that a new reality is being born. And those among the viewers who have business in the Middle East, come and do business uh, with Israel, uh, with Bahrain, with the UAE, uh, bring people together and Still, pray for the, uh, for the peace of, of Jerusalem and the region.